everybody, welcome yet again to another edition of 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Friends, the world is changing. And I'm not just talking about COVID. Frankly, COVID is just like some kerosene that's already putting on paradigm changes. And two of the biggest changes over the last decade are the shared economy and subscriptions. Think about all the subscriptions that you have. Apple, iTunes, Microsoft 365, Adobe, the list goes on and on. But friends, have you ever thought about a subscription to your car? Yes, a new way of effectively financing your automobile and the way that you live your life. Friends, with us today, we have Chris Noon from Collaborate. And Chris is gonna tell us all about that paradigm shift and how he is helping make it happen. With that introduction, Chris, welcome to 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Thank you, Greg. Hey, Chris, everybody has a story. We didn't start where we are today. How did you get in just a couple of minutes to where you are today? So in my career path getting into Collaborate, I worked a lot in um, the early days of the interactive industry and also mobile content. I uh, was involved in video games. They eventually went online. Video games then went on to mobile phones, became mobile apps. So I was there through that whole journey of very immature business models, a lot of work to understand what the customers really wanted. And that I think has set me up pretty well for this new role at Collaborate. I've been here for six years now. It still feels like a very new role. Um, things are changing so quickly. We keep evolving with the market. And we, I don't like to use the word disruption, but we are certainly changing the way that people are accessing cars. We're not trying to move anyone else out of the industry, but what we are doing is uncovering new revenue streams for automotive manufacturers and dealers. And we're doing that by giving uh, customers and also businesses new ways of getting access to cars that don't involve a long-term financial commitment. And can you just elaborate a little bit more on Collaborate, the overall model and how it works, if you don't mind? So Collaborate is made up of two different brands. The original brand that we've been working with is Drive My Car. Uh, that is Australia's largest peer-to-peer -peer car rental platform. So it's an opportunity for individual owners of vehicles and also corporate fleets and dealers to rent their cars to other people in businesses. So we provide the insurance, the, um, the booking platform, we collect the payments, we verify IDs, we do credit checks, uh, we create all the agreements that are required to make that a safe and efficient transaction. So we're the intermediary between uh, the vehicle owners and also the people and companies that want to use those vehicles. Uh, we operate in that model in a similar way to Airbnb. Um, and so we make it a safe and efficient business. Um, what we've done is based on that experience in that market, we've also moved into the car subscription space. Uh, in April 2019, we launched Carly, which is our car subscription business. And that has quickly become the major focus for Collaborate. It's building on a lot of the experience that we have with Drive My Car, our technology platform, our industry relationships, our knowledge of the market, but it also brings through our sharing economy model and puts it in uh, a new form, uh, positions it in, in an area that really resonates with customers right now. A lot of customers understand subscription, as you mentioned in, in the intro, a lot of people are subscribing to um, subscription products for their everyday needs. So we think it's a very uh, viable option for uh, vehicle access as well, because there are a large number of people who really can't commit to three to four years to buy a car or take a loan for that vehicle. Um, things can change in their life. They might want to change jobs or take out a mortgage or their family size might be changing. They can't guarantee when these things are happening. So should they get the sports car now? Should they get the SUV? Should they get a cheap car? Should they indulge in the expensive car? Making that commitment to buying a car is really a, a four year choice. And if you have to sell that car within the four years, you take a big hit on depreciation. You've got all the hassle of selling the vehicle. 
plus you've got all the ownership and, and um, uh, management of the vehicle as well, which is not only expensive, but also time consuming. Car subscription takes all of that away. What car subscription allows you to do is subscribe to a car on a monthly basis. It's a 30 day minimum commitment and 30 days notice to, to return the car. You can choose the exact car that you want. The car that you book on the platform is the car that you actually end up driving. It's not just a white hatchback, which might be a certain brand or may not be, you take what you get. You actually choose the exact car that you want on the platform and it's yours to, to drive until you choose to uh, pause the subscription. That sounds incredible. And with so many, uh, so many ways I can go, I suppose. Um, but maybe to back up for a second. So on, when it comes to Carly, do you, meaning collaborate, do you actually, per, from a mechanical point of view, do you purchase the car and then effectively on rent it to the cu end, end customer? Is that how it works? It's a bit more sophisticated than that. We have a capital light business model. We have never bought or leased a car ever. So we've been operating for over 10 years and we've never bought a car in that period. What we do is act as the intermediary between the owners of vehicles and people who, and companies that want to subscribe to them. So we access our vehicles from our, for our subscription product from automotive dealers, from automotive manufacturers. So we have a partnership with Hyundai of bringing in new vehicles into our uh, fleet. Our second largest shareholder is SG Fleet, which is Australia's leading car, uh, car leasing company. They are also providing ex-lease vehicles and also new vehicles into our fleet as well. So we're doing two things. We're providing a new way for customers to get into cars and have that flexible access to cars. But we're also providing a new way for owners of vehicles and, and corporate fleets to monetize those vehicles. But we do it in a safe way and we do a way that is efficient for their business. So at some points, corporate fleets might say, yes, we want to own a lot of cars. Other times they might say, well, we're not getting very good utilization. We'd like to monetize these in a certain way. Or they might be looking at disposing of a fleet and they might say, well, the, um, the, the used car market is depressed at the moment. We're not gonna get very good value for those cars. Let's put them on subscription for a year, generate more income for those vehicles and then sell them at a later date. So there's lots of different opportunities that we provide both on the supply side of our marketplace, but also on the demand side. So very much all of the capital that we use goes into staff technology and also marketing. We don't have to spend, have our balance sheet devoted to purchasing assets that may depreciate over time. That makes a lot of sense. And it also, uh, it sounds like your model is incredibly flexible for both side, for both parties involved from the fleet side or the customer side with the, uh, on the customer side, I can say personally, the idea to 30 days to change is, is just extraordinary. If you well, know. that's right. So within the subscription, it's 30 days to pause the subscription. But what we also offer on top of that is the ability to switch a vehicle at up to once a month. So it could be that you've got a road trip planned and you know, you're running around in the small hatchback in normal times. You might want a sports car or an SUV to do the road trip. You may have family visiting, so you want a seven seater. So we provide the opportunity for people to have the exact car that they need at that time. When you purchase a car, you have to make a decision on what you think you will need in three or four years time. And for many people, that's, you, you can't do it. You never get that answer right. What we say with subscription is choose the car that's right for you now. And then when your circumstances change, choose a different car. And there's no financial penalty for doing that. And do you also feel that people, meaning customers, uh, I can't help but think are just becoming more and more comfortable uh, with subscriptions? I just subscribe to a coffee uh, subscription, if you will, of having that delivered at home. I have my toothbrush delivered, believe it or not, every six weeks. Do you think that that is just a paradigm shift of a customer uh, experience? We certainly see it happening and, and the research that we've seen and also the research that we've conducted ourselves within Australia shows that there is an increasing propensity for people to choose subscription. Um, and what we're seeing uh, specifically in the car subscription market is that that 
uh, likelihood to uh, consider car subscription is actually increasing due to COVID because what people are doing, they're saying, well, if we're facing a recession, if there's risk of unemployment, um, we don't want to have financial liabilities. We don't want to have a loan on a vehicle if we may be unemployed in six months time. Or if we're on JobKeeper, they may not be able to get a loan or they may not want to be able to commit all of their savings to a vehicle. So we're seeing that the, the gradual change that was happening in the car subscription market um, is now accelerating uh, due to COVID because we offer um, a lower risk option for people who still need to access cars. And COVID has acted as kerosene on what are existing trends in place already. Um, just tell us during this epidemic though, how has your growth been so far? How has it affected your business? We saw some volatility um, early on within the, uh, the lockdown restrictions. And we saw some terminations of subscriptions, which is totally understandable. That's why you have a subscription. If your circumstances change, you can hand the vehicle back. But it was in the low single digits. It was a very, very small number of people. We had a slight slowdown in um, new subscriptions happening. But as we moved into April, May, and certainly into June, and then into July, we've seen some amazing growth, the best growth that we've actually ever experienced. So in July alone, we, our subscription transaction um, revenue grew by 30% versus June. Um, in the previous quarter, we saw, uh, or sorry, the June quarter versus the March quarter, we saw a 48% increase in their subscription revenue. So um, we saw that what people were possibly doing is delaying or putting off or avoiding buying a car. They still needed a car and subscription was the, was the model that really resonated with them because it was the lower risk option. We also saw a lot of people um, avoiding taking public transport and starting to drive again. So there was less traffic on the road. It's probably easier to get to work in a car, but these are the people who maybe sold their car a year or two ago and said, we'll take public transport. Now public transport is something that's not uh, all that popular at the moment and people are moving back to vehicles. Now things may change in a year or two, but for the meantime, it makes sense for those people to be subscribing to vehicles. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible when you think about, you know, 30% month over month, 48% quarter over quarter numbers that you've put up there. Uh, you know, those are truly staggering. But again, I keep coming back to the point of, I think that it's, the trend was already in place. COVID has just acted as really a fire on that, if you will. That's right. And we, we've actually done some research on this. We're the first company in Australia to do proper research on the car subscription market. So we engaged Omnipol, the national research firm, uh, to do a survey on car subscription attitudes. And what we found was that there were 38% of Australians were interested in car subscription and that the interest in car subscription was actually increasing due to COVID rather than decreasing. So what we see is that a lot of people are interested in car subscription and because COVID it really is something that means more people potentially have changes in their life. If there's going to be unemployment or recession, uh, that there are obviously more changes that are happening beyond people buying houses, having families, changing jobs, moving locations. So, we see that what, what COVID is, is just more opportunities for people to have change in their life, more opportunities for people to be either forced to or want to change their cars. Therefore, there's more reason for people to be interested in car subscription. Yeah, it makes sense. And also, uh, obviously this year is going to be a year unlike any other year, but is there a seasonality element as well to the business, have you found? Not really. We've, uh, since we've launched subscription, our subscriptions have been increasing month on month. So we haven't seen that seasonality. We also do operate in the car rental market with Drive My Car. So we do understand the seasonality in the market. We have amazing December quarter and then it drops off in, in the, the following uh, March quarter. Uh, but we don't see that with Carly. We see uh, month on month increases and we don't see that level of seasonality because the interesting thing about car subscription is we're not competing against car rental companies at all. We are not focused on the holiday market. We're not really focused on the business travel market. That's been really good for us because they're, they're the two markets that were massively hit 
uh, when the lockdown restrictions occurred and will be impacted for, for I think, for many more years as well. Um, car subscription is an alternative to buying a car or taking on long-term finance. So we're operating in a different market to the car rental market. We're operating at the level where we're helping dealers and manufacturers get, still get people into cars, but giving them a business model that makes sense compared to actually buying the car. Absolutely. And Chris, you know, you're fresh right now uh, from a, you know, turning to the finances on, on the balance sheet from a, a, a capital raise. Can you just talk about your capital position and how do you feel going for the next six to 12 months? We're very fortunate to have the support of some very large shareholders which are active in the automotive market. So on, in our register, we have uh, SG Fleet, which is the leading uh, car leasing company in Australia. Uh, Robbie Blau, the CEO, sits on our board. We also have Turner's Automotive, which is the largest seller of cars in New Zealand. Todd Hunter also sits on our board. Um, so uh, we have um, great support from those companies. We are working on referral models with uh, SG Fleet in Australia for them to bring business into our company. They're also supplying vehicles into our fleet. Uh, and we're only a few weeks away from launching a subscription service with Turners in New Zealand as well. From a capital point of view, our two larger shareholders, both Willoughby Capital and SG Fleet, have underwritten our um, uh, entitlement issue, which was announced on the 31st of August. Uh, the underwriting is also supported by myself, another director, and also a member of the management team as well. So 60% of the entitlement issue to raise up to three and a half million dollars is already underwritten. Um, we've done that at around a 7% discount to the five day VWAP. Uh, we know that a lot of companies in the market are doing very deep discounts to raise money, but we feel that we've got a different story. We've got some very deep relationships within the industry. We've got the shareholders which are operating in this industry and see us as the future of the industry. And we've also got the evidence to show that our revenue is increasing as well. So we, we didn't feel that we had to do a deeply discount, discounted rights offer. Uh, we're pretty much, you know, uh, round about where the closing price is at the moment. But we're also offering one for five uh, free attaching options as well. So that is uh, construed as part of partly a discount as well. Absolutely. And, and I, would you say that that should see you through call the next at least six months in your mind? Uh, certainly more than six months. So we're seeing revenue increase every month. We've always been very um, tight on our expenses in the business. As I said, we don't need to devote capital to purchasing depreciating assets. Our capital goes into staff, which are productive, goes into technology, which is productive, and, we, and it goes into marketing, which brings revenue in the door. So they're our three key focuses. We will be ramping up those expenses, but not dramatically. And we'll do that in line with the, the growth opportunities that we see within the business. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you bring a, you know, you hit a key point there, which is that, you know, the old joke with cars is that the, the day you buy them, they lose 20% off the, off the jump start. Uh, it's not an asset. It's a, it, it effectively becomes an expense, if you will. That's um, right. And, and what we do is we take that away. And it's interesting you mentioned that. We've also recently obtained a product ruling from the Australian Taxation Office. Um, and we reached out to them to do this because we, we knew that a subscription was also a great product for businesses, but we're getting a few questions around the tax deductibility status and also the fringe benefits tax implications as well. So we worked closely with the uh, ATO to develop the product ruling, which was released a few days ago. And this, um, clarifies the tax deductibility of car subscription and also uh, lays out how FBT uh, can be managed as well. Uh, there's a lot of information on the carly.co website around the, um, the product ruling and what the tax benefits are of car subscription. So we see this as another step to legitimise uh, car subscription and also show that it's a viable uh, product and a viable opportunity for many businesses around the country. And that will be a big focus for us going into FY21 is really developing that business market and certainly having SG Fleet on, on our board and in our register as well is going to assist us to untap those markets. Fantastic. 
Chris, we try to keep these interviews short and sharp, but in closing, um, are there any point or two points that you'd like to hit home on for the viewers? I think one of the key things is that, like it or not, the, the automotive market is changing. There are a lot of dynamics that are changing. We've seen that Holden has shut down in Australia. Five or 10 years ago, that would have been inconceivable. Uh, we'll see people now who are using subscription for most things in their lives. We'll see millennials don't really get joy out of material possessions and owning things, but what they're interested in is experiences and having the right product at the right time. When they don't want that product, they want to get rid of it. They don't want the expense, they don't want the hassle of it. So things are fundamentally changing in the market. We're not the ones that are causing those changes. We're merely there facilitating the uh, interaction between the customers who want those assets and the holders of those assets who will be automotive dealers or manufacturers or, or uh, fleet companies to put those two parties together in a, in a seamless way that makes sense for both of them. Fantastic. Chris, thank you very much for your time. Please stay in touch with us. It's an incredibly exciting story, uh, even in these tough times. Chris, be well. Excellent. Thanks, Greg.